bless you. I feel the Holy Ghost this house tonight. You can be seated tonight if you like. Amen. I want somebody that's excited that you're here on a Wednesday night, anybody that's excited, I want you to jump up and testify tonight. Is there anybody excited? We got Brother East is excited. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen to that. Praise God. Anybody else want to testify? All is well. Amen. Praise God. Amen. One thing you can remember this, uh, church is your strength. It's your joy you get. Amen. You come and you, it just, I don't know about you guys, but it just does something good. It makes me, it makes me like Thursday better when I come to church on Wednesday night. Amen. It makes my, my Mondays be better and Tuesdays better when I hit on Sunday. Amen. And it's just awesome to be in the house of God on this Wednesday night. Somebody else want to testify? Sister Lynn's going to sing for us tonight. Anybody? Anybody want to testify? Anybody? All right. If you didn't testify, thank you, Brother Chuck. Thank you for testifying. God answers prayers. That's true. Now, I said if you didn't testify, you got to give $100 an offering tonight. If ushers would come, praise God. This is for building fun. You didn't testify, give $100. Praise God. Amen. No, we won't do you that way. We do want you to be, a, be blessed. How many likes to be blessed? If you'd like to be blessed, raise your hand. Do you know when we give, we're blessed? We're blessed and we give. And I tell you, God will bless you tonight. Give and God will bless you for it. Amen. And I think God will, will do it even before you can realize that he'll do it tonight. Amen. Brother Haley, ask the Lord to bless this offering as Sister Land's coming to sing.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands together. Thank God for saving a wretch like us tonight. Lord, I'm so pray, so thankful, God, and I praise you for saving me, Jesus. Such an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think I'm just going to clap my hands on that one. I'm excited that God saved me tonight. Yes, he did. He saved me tonight. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Uh, don't forget about our announcements. we got a lot going to be happening here at the Carville Pentecostal Church. But tonight, when our kids are dismissed tonight, I want all parents to know, for the next few weeks, our kids are going to be splitting classes. It'll be a girls' class and a boys' class. There was a couple of our letters didn't get turned in, but I want all of the parents to know that they will be discussing some things that probably the schools are teaching wrong on. And we're going to, we're going to put some godly thoughts into it. But if you feel your kid's not mature enough to sit through these classes, then that's going to, you're the parent, so you decide that, okay? But there are going to be some uh, talking, some just, uh, boy and girl talk in these next few weeks and on Wednesday night. So if you can get your kids here, I think our kids need to hear the facts of life and not, not the way the world tries to teach them to us as well. Amen. Praise us. So don't forget about that. Sunday we're going to have church. You don't want to miss Sunday. we got something very special. I think, I think Jesus is going to be here Sunday. You don't want to miss him. Amen. He's going he's gonna to be our special guest Sunday. Praise the Lord. And uh, also Sunday night's revival. We always have revival on Sunday night. Uh, then again, we're going to have uh, Monday night is our, is, is what is it, just prayer meeting this Monday night? It, regular prayer meeting this Monday night coming. But next week is revival. Everybody say revival. Please don't stay out on me on revival. Uh, one revival, one time I remember was having a great revival and, and we had more visitors than we did uh, uh, regular folks. Church, I'm here to tell you, revival is not really for visitors. They're revivals for the home folk. And we need to be revived. Just say, I need revival. Amen. I need revival. So we start next Sunday night. We're going to go on a six-week revival. We're not going to miss a night. We're going to go six weeks straight revival. Uh, I just love to see some of your face when I said that. If I, if that that's Facebook worthy if I could have took y'all's picture right now. Praise God. No, we won't be six weeks. But we do have a, a Sunday and Monday. Brother Jason Kaiser will be with us next week. Not this week, but next week. Looking for God to do great things. Let's sing one more course tonight. Then we're going to get right into the Word of God in Jesus' name. Let's worship them.
come to a place that you can just bless the Lord with some worship and praise. And I just love to worship the Lord tonight. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Our children can be dismissed for Children's Church and our teenagers can be dismissed. I think it's 13 to 18 in that class. And I believe next, next Wednesday night they're having a class for the uh, Omega Youth Group, which is uh, 19 to 36. And that'll be next week on Monday. They're going to start doing, I, I don't know, if once a month, I think, for the Omega. But that's the Alpha group that's going out now, so y'all understand we have an Alpha Omega group. And so if, uh, if you know anybody that's uh, 18 to 36, make sure they're here next week. they got a great lesson laid out for that age group as well. Amen. So excited what God's doing. Don't forget men are leaving. Anybody going to men's conference, we're leaving at 1 o'clock Friday. And we need to get going at least by 1 o'clock. So try to be here, amen, for that to catch the van. I think we have a couple that's coming down in their own cars. Amen. If you're excited what God is doing, say yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm excited what God is doing. I know you don't always swing from the chandeliers when you come to the church. But I, I really would like to try, but I don't know if I could jump that high, but uh, I do, I am, I am excited what God is doing tonight. So I may slow down in more of a teaching mode tonight, if it's all right, because I feel like we need to know where we're at. But how many knows tonight that God has something for you in your life? Everybody under the sound of my voice. Now, I know some people don't try to claim it. Uh, they act like they just want to be one of those that slip in, you know, and sit down. Nobody sees me that I'm out. But really and truly, every one of us was born for a reason. God, God has something for us to do in our lives. And, um, and I'm going to tell you about my bowl on the table here in a few moments. And, uh, but just so you know, that note has nothing to do with my message tonight. Forbidden fruit, because I was thinking, when, right before I church tonight, I thought, if I don't put something on that bowl, somebody's going to take one of my apples and eat it and... And I can see a kid running around with an apple in their mouth. And I thought it would be kids, but uh, somebody told me more adults touched my apples tonight than anybody. Praise God. Because anytime you have a sign that says wet paint, you know, first thing you do is you go over and touch the wall. And, you know, it's just a, a human nature. But forbidden fruit, the reason I put that on there, because it's forbidden for you guys to eat tonight. Praise God. But I want to preach uh, from Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. Very very familiar verse and I really and truly all verses ought to be familiar to us but have you ever read a verse and it just like man I don't never remember reading that you, I've read the whole Bible I don't know how many times I, I, I don't I lost count but uh, there's still times I'll read the scripture and I say man I don't I never read that before and uh, I text some guys a, a, a scripture the other day and I was just so excited what it said and it was a perfect scripture for our church and I'm going to preach it one day whenever I, I get the opportunity and I'm not going to tell you what it is because you'll be thinking on that instead of this one. But Romans 12 and 2 says this, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated tonight. Uh, I think by renewing our mind, is, it, it, that's how we prove God's will in our lives. By renewing our mind, because a lot of times our mind, I don't know about your mind, but I'm going to tell you about my mind tonight, because uh, I can tell you how crazy mine gets sometimes. My mind sometimes gets crazy off over here somewhere, thinking things that, 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 I mean, it's not bad, but I'm talking about just things that's not concerned what I really should be concerned about. And so our minds get so out of whack sometimes, but when we renew our mind on a daily basis, I think it'll prove God's will in our life. Let me ask you a question, and I want you to think about it while I'm preaching. Do you really know for sure the will of God in your life right now? Think about it. Don't, don't answer. Do you think you really know? Do you think you've got right where God wants you? But before we can uh, have a transformation, I, I believe something has to fall off of us. Something that's on our minds or on our hearts or whatever it may be, it has to fall off before we can have a transformation. And, and, and he said, be not conformed to this world. Now at that point, moment in the scripture, he's not talking about this planet world, but he's talking about the things that are in the world, the worldly system. Don't be, don't be conformed. And, and I, 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 you have to agree with me because I know it's true, but we are, we are being invaded today by the world system on every hand. And it's, it's making it to where you can't operate unless you take it. I mean, uh, the mark of the beast, that's not in my message tonight, but it just comes to my mind. Think about it. 
before it's over, we're either going to eat or take or, or not eat. You know, it's it's going to be that point, the mark of the beast, and and it's, they're 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 just invading us so strong to make it happen this way. And eventually, it's going to be your cash is not going to be any good. You know, some of you got the little wad of cash in your front pocket. Well, one day that's not going to be any good. I mean, I, I mean, seriously, it's just not going to be there. You and I are going to come to a point, but they're going to invade us with this technology and this stuff that we're going to have to do it. It's, uh, some people say, well, I don't know how to turn a computer on. Well, honey, I'm telling you, you better start learning. It's getting quiet on me. You better learn some things because you're going to have to learn how to operate. You're going to have to be put, you're going to be put into those spots. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, it's coming so fast. You know, think about it. What, what's hot and what's not, everything's coming so fast. Sometimes, sometimes before you even get anything paid for, it's out of date. Think about it. I mean, nowadays, they, they'll finance your car for 72, 84 months. You know, that's a long t- time you get a seven, eight-year-old car paid for, it's, it's out of date. You know, a lot of times before you get a computer paid for, if you get a, a high-dollar computer before you get it paid for, it's out of date. It doesn't matter. I, I think we might, as, we might as well stop trying to keep up with the things because they're changing so fast that it's hard even to get conformed to it because it changes and people are changing so fast. Even, even technology is going so fast that we can't keep up with it. I, I don't know. Have they got a seven out yet or is it almost out? But, it's coming. It's almost out. They got one now that you can put on your wrist, guys, and the phone will show up on your arm, and you can just call from your arm. And it's just technology is out of this world. It's it's, it's going on. It's, it's 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 not just today that it's happening, but it's beginning to gradually invade us, and it's taking a hold of our lives. To where today, if if all of this was collapsed and the computers collapsed, this generation would starve to death. It'd be a lot of homeless teenagers nowadays because they don't know how to plant gardens, they don't know how to cut grasses, they don't know how to get out and make a, a living. Why? Because it's so every, everything's at our, our touch of our hands. I'm gonna tell you how crazy life is. I read this this week and it kind of blew my mind, but around about 30 years ago, uh, they thought that homosexuality was a mental disorder. And so what they done was they shocked the people they, they re- literally shocked them to get their mental disorder straightened out. And they would shock. And that was, I, when I looked it up, I heard somebody say that. And I said, I'm going to go look it up. So I, and sure enough, that's what they done. They shocked people. But what it was, 30 years later, the same people who were saying that it was a mental disorder, nowadays they say that people are saying, if you don't accept it, you're not normal. That's what they're saying now. The same people that said it was a mental disorder then, but now you're not normal. When I, when I heard that and read that today, I thought, I said, you know what? That's exactly right. I am a peculiar person. I am a, I am a I, listen to me, I am a chosen person. I am, I am different. I, I'm not normal. If that's the normal, I'm not normal tonight. I'm a peculiar person. I'm different. And I think the church should be a peculiar person. If your school can't tell no difference in you, if your job can't tell any difference in you than what, what the next person is, then probably something is not right in your life. You probably are conforming to the world. He said, be not conformed to this world. Church, if we're conforming, that means we're wanting to fit in. But I'm gonna tell you, this world's not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. But I like to say tonight that, that I would like to say when, I, when I'm preaching, I'm hoping to be influencing people. I hope I influence a lot of people about good words. When I bring words forth, I hope I am. But I want you to realize, me or any preacher, any pastor, whoever you're preaching behind this pulpit, we have a slim chance of influencing anybody anymore. Why do you say that, Brother Hunt? Because look what we're having to go against. We're having to go against media that's pumped in our ear 24-7 a day almost. I thought about it this week as I, as I go eat and I meet here and I meet there. Everywhere I met somebody this week, music was playing in the background. It didn't matter where I went. I go to the restaurant, they got some kind of music playing and, and a lot of times I can't even understand it and I went in somewhere the other day and they had Michael Jackson playing. It had that beat going on. I thought, it doesn't matter where you go, they pump it in our minds, they pump it in our hearts. And if we're not at a restaurant, we're at home and guess what we got on at home? Somebody tell me what you got on at home. Don't, don't be scared. Y'all can say it loud. TV. Most of us got it on when we're at home. It's because we got to have the racket. You may not even be watching it. Somebody says, I just like the racket. Why? Because we want something pumped in our mind. And it doesn't matter. I mean, how many of you just ride down the car, uh, ride down the road most time with no radio on, no nothing? You're just sitting there riding. 
Most time, no, because you flip that radio on the talk show or, or you're singing something or the kids are talking or somebody. Why? Because we're, most of the time, now you've got, you got the peculiar little, little pile of people that, that may never listen to the radio, don't have TV anymore, or, or don't, uh, they put earplugs in when they go out and eat and they don't want to hear all this stuff. And, I, and you've got some of those that are, I know one preacher, when he goes to a hotel room, he takes his jacket or his blanket and he throws it over the TV. Because he don't want to have no, no temptation to turn TV on. He don't, and, and hey, that's fine. There's some out there. But church, I'm here to tell you, preachers don't have much of a chance of, of, of getting people to listen and stay steady with what they're saying because our minds are so trapped in what we are pumping in our minds today. We are. We, we have so much junk pumped in our minds. But church, we cannot let this world mode or mode us into something that they want us to be. But that's what they want to do. They want to mold you into something that's not necessary. In other words, and then they're going to make you think in your mind that you're okay. You're, you're good enough. You don't have to speak in tongues. You don't have to be holy. You don't have to go to church every Wednesday night and every Sunday morning and Sunday night and prayer meeting. I mean, what's that preacher thinking? And the world gets us thinking that because they pumping all this stuff in our mind that don't even matter. But I got a question to ask you tonight. Who, who here is saved? Raise your hand. Who's saved? Well, we're going to have to pray some of you through tonight. I can see that. But let me ask you this again. Same people that raised your hand, the rest of them, we're going to work on them, get them saved. But let me ask you tonight, what, what is about you that is saved? What about you that is saved? Is your body saved? Is your mind saved? No. You know why? Because our bodies can't be saved. If we just go look in the mirror, we already can see why our bodies are not saved. Our bodies are decaying. Our bodies are getting wrinkles. Our bodies are getting spots all over. Our bodies, come on, as we get older, things happen. Can I hear amen? Because if our bodies were saved, man, we'd be just, man, we'd just look great, wouldn't we? No, no problem. You know, slim and that six pack would be out, you know. And it, I, I have a six pack. Y'all know that, right? I got one. It's just under all this, praise God. But, but it, it don't happen because, you know why? The body's not saved. How about the mind? Is the mind saved? No, the mind for sure is not saved because even while I've been preaching right now, some of your minds have thought some crazy stuff. Just while I've been preaching. Yeah, see, there you go. I told you. Why? Because our minds are not programmed to be saved. But guess what? Our soul is saved. The spirit inside of us right now is saved. Our mind can't be saved. Guess what? You, you can kill this body. You can talk about this body. You can spit on this body. You can break this body. But one thing you cannot do is take away the spirit that's inside of me. It's going to live forever. It is saved. It shall be saved. Now, I know, I know tonight that the mind and, and, our, and all this and, and all this is going to be when we get to, get to that side of, the, of, uh, of, of glory and all this is going to be changed in a moment in a twinkle of an eye. We're going to have a brand new body and that body is going to be saved. But this body is going to, going to go back to dirt. It's going to go. Matter of fact, let me read 1 Corinthians 15 and 52. It says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised and corrupt, and we shall be what? Changed. We're going, I think, I'm going to tell you, this body that you and I have, it couldn't handle heaven right now. That's why we're going to have to have a glorified body. That's why we're going to have to have a brand new body. Amen. And all that's going to be great. But it's not yet. It's not time. Now, like I said, you can kill this body, but you cannot kill my spirit. Now, I, I like this one, you know, because to be absent from this body is what? To be present with the Lord. And I, 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 I know none of us want to die, but you know what? Could you just imagine with me just for a moment? And, and I don't want nobody looking at your neighbor, but I want you to look at yourself. Could you imagine the body that you're in right now is just nothing but a pile of dirt and it's going to go back to dust where it belongs and God's going to have you a body without wrinkle, without blemish. You're not going to be limping, Brother Hunt. Come on. Some of you are going to have a pretty head of hair. Some of your hair is going to be, man, just think about it. A brand new body. But you know what? We got we to gotta make it to get there. Everybody say, I got to make it. Gotta ma I got to keep going. Okay, now listen, the Bible says, and to be conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now I'm gonna show you a couple things tonight and, and uh, this, this demonstration, I, I have saw this about two or three times in my lifetime and I probably won't be as good as some of the people that I've seen do this, but I wanna demonstrate something for you tonight. In my hand tonight are tools. Everybody know what these are? Does anybody know what you do with these things? 
because I'm kind of trying to figure these things out. Uh, in my hand tonight, I've got some tools here and I want to use them and I want to show some things, but, but, but what good are these if they're just laying on the table? They look pretty. How many of you got those things in your, your cabinet or on top of your cabinet? I got all these knives shoved down. You got a nice pretty set. They don't stay in sets at my house. They get all messed up, but, but nevertheless, we have them, but they're, they don't do anything as long as they're laying on the table. But they're pretty, right? They, they look nice. You got a nice set of knives. Uh, but, but, but this knife right here is made to do something. Now, like I said, this is not forbidden fruit anymore. Now I get to play with my fruit tonight, all right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some fruits some here tonight. And, and let's, let's go with a red apple because I'm gonna save them green apples for me later. And, uh, but if you take an apple tonight and you, you, you look at it and you look at this too, if I take this too tonight and I take it and I try to peel this apple, and I, I do it like that, guess what? It ain't, going, it ain't working. What's, what's wrong with it? Because it's not used to, it's, it's, it's what it can be used for. It's, 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 being, it's here, it looks good, but if I'm over here doing this, this apple's not gonna get peeled, is it? It ain't gonna do any good. But if I learn what, this is, what the function of this is for and I, I keep it in my hand, or, or, or maybe, maybe if it ain't working here, maybe it can be a, a pencil I can write something with, reckon? Or maybe I can sew with it. If I try to do the wrong thing with this thing, guess what? It's not gonna work. There's not too much things you can do with this thing, by the way. When, when I was growing up, it was called a potato pill, and I don't know what the real name of them for. Who said paring knife? Somebody said that, the paring knife? Is that what it is, a paring knife? But whatever it is, it's like an egg flipper. I didn't know it was a spatula until I got married, and my wife said, go get the spatula. I said, I don't know what a spatula is. I always thought it was an egg flipper, you know? And, Y'all just have to know who I, I didn't. I didn't do much in the kitchen. But anyway, I'm uh, hoping I can figure out what this thing is doing. How do you use these things? I have no idea. And y'all think this is funny, but I had grown people one day at, at the community service that did not know how to use this thing. And so I was trying to show them, and, they, and I, it took me a minute as well. But I got to use it. But the thing is, is this. This is something good if it's used for what it's used for. Now, I can't take this thing and, and cut this thing straight down the middle because it's not a knife, it's a, it's a peeler. It's something that you peel things with, it, it's there. And I, I thought about that and I thought, you know, if you really make this thing work right, it'll peel this apple, right? And, and I'm, I'm gonna really make it look easy, guys. So don't y'all be jealous. But if I peel this apple and I get all the peeling and I'm gonna go around and, and, and guess what? That, that's what it's made to do. It's not made to write, it's not made to uh, uh, stab. I mean, it's not made to cut a steak in half. It's not a steak knife. You wouldn't touch your steak with this knife. Matter of fact, it's, it's just a, what? Peeler, that's all it does. It peels and it peels and, huh? Well, can you really? I never tried that. I'd try that. That would be pretty good. But see, they didn't have these when I was growing up, guys, because we had to use these regular knives to peel with and my mama would whip me when I peeled all the peach away off the, off the peaches when we was canning peaches. And I learned the easy, you know, the hard way. You got a whipping if you peel too much peach away, and uh, and you got and guess what? I got pretty good at peeling these things when I was a kid, because man, you didn't want to peel the apple or the peach or anything you was peeling away. You wanted to be a, a good part of it. But I thought about the about the apple here, and I thought about how we we too we this thing has proved itself now. It's done its job. But now I can't do anything else with it with this apple unless I get little slices of apple off, right? This is not gonna do me any good, any more good. Now, if I, what I'm preaching tonight, I forgot to tell the same man, but, but we need to find our purpose in life. Does anybody know what your purpose is? Oh God, help us all. I got a long sermon now I gotta work on. But finding our purpose, what is your purpose in the kingdom of God? Do you feel like you have any purpose in the kingdom of God? We do have some purpose, but you know what? We have to find our purpose. See, I had to find it. I couldn't write with this. I couldn't sew with this. I couldn't slice with this. Uh, the only thing I could do with this, really and truly, I, I wouldn't really waste my money on something like this if I, if I didn't, you know, because I don't peel apples every day. I don't peel potatoes every day. As a matter of fact, I probably would go with a tool that I can use for everything. I could appeal with this. I could slice with this. But yet and still, this had a purpose. Look at your neighbor and say, you got a purpose. But a lot of times we try to do things that's not, not our purpose. This thing here would make a, a, a sliced apple look real terrible if I tried to slice this apple tonight. It'd be terrible looking. It wouldn't, it wouldn't slice too good. Matter of fact, I'll probably cut myself somewhere down the line. But if I take one of these knives right here, I can cut this apple. Y'all watch this. I, look how that thing cuts that apple. That's pretty good. It is good, Brother Manny. But I cut the apple, right? 
But if I keep slicing this apple, guess what else I'm gonna do? See, it, it cuts, and this knife is doing its purpose tonight. Let me ask you again, are you doing your purpose that God called you to be? Have you found your purpose in the kingdom of God yet? But you know what this purpose right here is? It'll keep, it'll keep slicing. It'll keep going all these apples. And I'll sell these slices of apple for, the, for cheese for Christ tonight. $20 a slice. Cheese for Christ. We can slice it and slice it. If I keep slicing this apple, guess what I come to in a minute? You come to what? A core. And that's what this guy that I saw this doing this meeting one time, he was talking about the core, but I'm gonna change it a little bit and go to our purpose tonight. There's a core at the bottom of this. That What, what do we usually do when we get done with this core? Has anybody ever eat the cores? Anybody here eats the cores? No, but did you know that that's the most important part about this apple? The core was the most important part of this apple. You know why? Because if you go a little bit deeper here and you cut this thing open in the middle, there's something that pops out in the middle right here. If y'all can see this or not, but there's there some seeds in there. Nobody eats that part of the apple. Matter of fact, most of the time we throw it away. But did you know that's, that's what caused this apple to be? Do you know what that really is inside of this apple? It's a tree inside of this apple. It's a tree inside of this apple. Let me ask you this, Brother Haley. If I take this up here to your land and I'm gonna grow me an apple farm, but I take all these peelings and I go and I lay them down in the hole and I cover it up, am I gonna have any trees? No, why? Because this ain't where the fruit comes from. This here is actually useless. Now, I don't know about y'all. Some people like the peeling. I don't like the peeling. I like to peel all the peeling away and slice it and put some peanut butter on the apple and eat the apple. But yeah, some people, you like, you say, you, that's why you're so healthy. You eat the peeling, I don't. But nevertheless, there's something inside this thing that works. That's not gonna work. Matter of fact, it does make an apple pretty though, doesn't it? Think about it. If, if, I, they, if they peel this apple at Kroger, and this is where I went and got them, by the way, if they peeled them at Kroger and laid it, if they peeled it and just lay it up on top of the shelf, in about an hour, they're gonna be brown or less probably, probably less than that. Why? Because this peeling is a good thing to have. This peeling makes it look really good, which is a lot of time is the part that we like to be, right? Come on, a lot of you got your peeling on tonight. You look real nice, you look nice. You dressed up for church, you get dressed up, you come in, you got a good peeling on, you got a good covering on, but there's something inside of there. But the thing is, is what we gotta do is we gotta find out what is my purpose? What am I supposed to be for? So I can't plant this, but now that looks good, but the best part of the apple is right here. I told you it was good. That's the best part of the apple right there. But you know what? I can't take this down to Brother Haley's little farm and plant me a row of, of apples with this apple, the meat part of the apple, and go back next year and hope I got apple trees planted everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna lick all these so you won't eat them. No. But you know, there's, we, we try to do things that's not our purpose. You can't take this, that part of the apple and go out and try to make it look uh, like it's gonna be a great thing to have. I'm gonna have an apple farm, no. But you gotta go down to where the core is and you gotta find the seed. And I know it's a process, all that. We, we're not gonna get into that, let them dry out, let them do all this. But, but what I'm saying tonight is where we get our, our, our pro produce from is from the seed. So the question is, what seed lies deep inside of you? It may not be an apple, it may not be a peach, it may not be a cucumber, whatever it may be. The seed that's in you is what's gotta come out of you. Now you may be having all the pretty things, you may be able to do this, you may be have all of that, you may have the, the outside looking good, but the thing is, what is my purpose? What am I really supposed to do? Because if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you're gonna make a mess out of your life. Your life is gonna be useless. Matter of fact, if I go out today and I try to plant all of this, but I throw this away, I throw it in the garbage can and I just get rid of it. Guess what, I haven't had any, but I had a good, good apple, I had a good time, but I haven't had any, pro what our problem is, what I'm trying to tell you tonight is preaching looks really good. Preaching does, when, you're, when people are sitting in the pew, they think the preachers have it made. All he does is eat chicken and preach, that's all he's gotta do. That's it, you know why? Because all they see is the peeling but they don't see the hours it takes to pray and get a sermon together, get things to down pat and, and go to the hospitals and visit and take care of this problem and this counseling situation, this counseling situation. They don't see all of that, but they see the peeling and they said, oh, it looks good. Hey, I get to do that and I can make people happy, but I'm gonna tell you, it don't start in the peeling. 
Preaching starts from the seed. You go deep and you plant things. Matter of fact, we gotta learn something. What, what did the scripture say? He says that, that uh, he said, I, I planted, Apollos what, did what? He watered, and who gave the increase? Christ gives the increase. So how are we gonna do it? Hey, I may not, I may not never see the increase totally of what God's gonna do. I'm planting a seed. Somebody might come behind me. I hope the congregation here gets behind me. You're gonna help me water the seed that we're planting tonight. And we're gonna have us an apple farm and or a peach farm or whatever we plant. And we're gonna have a great time together. But the thing is this, God is the one that's gonna give the increase. Come on, we're going to plant some seeds. We've got teachers that are teaching that are planting seeds. Now, I can go after Sister Turner gets through teaching a good uh, Bible lesson or whoever's teaching or preaching that sermon, and I can go over there and dig that seed up and throw it out to the birds and say, forget it. Guess what? It'll never produce. But if a congregation, we can blame it on the leadership all day long we want to. Well, if they was a little better this, a little better that, a little better this, all you want. But if it's the congregation, if we, if we, those that are listening to the word of God, those that are listening to the singing, now you can, you can dry up the seed, throw the seed out if you want to, but if you would put a little water on that seed, come on, you, I'm talking about, I don't want you to think about this a little bit. Have you ever noticed how much a preacher can really preach the house down when somebody's saying, amen, preach, come on, come on, preacher. Tell us some more, preacher. Tell us what it's about. You know what? Some people say it's like pouring gasoline on fire, but really what you're doing is you're, paying, you're pouring water on the seed. You know what, church, there's nothing that'll never grow. It'll never grow if we don't water what we're doing tonight. Come on, we gotta water the music guys. We gotta encourage them. Man, that was great playing. Come on, where's you at? We missed you last week. Come on, where, where's our guitar player that this can play like, like uh, uh, the big, like, well, we need to water him. We need to put some water. Why? Because we gotta grow. We can't get stagnant. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a good planter and I'm not a good grower in a garden. It just takes too much work. But there's a work to make things happen. But it's somehow or another, the only way it's gonna work is we gotta find our purpose. We can't, let, we can't let this man find my purpose. I can't let her find my purpose. I can't let him find my purpose. But I gotta find what I am good at. How am I gonna do that? I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna do it. Are you ready? I'm gonna tell you how you can find your purpose. Think of one thing in your mind. And I'm talking church stuff now. I'm not talking about anything outside the church. Think of one thing in your mind tonight that when it happens in the church, you get a passion for it. Think about it. That it really just moves you. Think about it. What is it? Is it, is it playing the guitar? Is it playing the piano? Playing the drums? Or is it... Is it um, what could it be? Sometimes we get it mixed up. We think it might be playing the guitar and it could be hanging door hangers. Come on, have you thought about it? Think, think about this. How, how many times have I went to a nursing home, Sister Turner, and I was there with you, and I'm gonna be honest with you, but on my way to the nursing home, I said, oh, here we go again. I'm loading all the music stuff up, getting all the microphones. I had to get some over here, some over there, and I gathered it all up, make sure we got it all, make sure it works. But after I leave the nursing home, it's like, whoo, that felt good. That was a passion, because you know why? I love people. Now, I'm gonna tell you, building a church or coming to church and building your life, building your Christian life, it's not gonna be easy. As a matter of fact, it'd have been a whole lot easier for most of us tonight to do what? Stay home, get in the recliner, rest a little bit, take it easy. It'd have been easy, but I'm gonna tell you, anytime you come to the house of God, it's gonna be a sacrifice. But if somehow or another you can make it happen and find your purpose. Hey, it don't have to be the same purpose that I got. You know, I think Brother Terry's a cool person, but I, I don't have a passion to be an usher. I don't have it at all. But you know what? If he loses a passion, he shouldn't be there either. Same way for pastoring. If I, if I lose a passion for souls and people, and if I ever stand up and say, I hate people, I don't like people, I shouldn't be here. Come on, because this is a people's job. It's a passion. I gotta find what, what my purpose is in life. What am I good at? Am I good with my hands? Am I good at fellowship? Am I good at talk, taking people out and talking with them and encouraging them? Am I a good encourager? Am I good uh, uh, just walking up and just being a good helper? Anybody ever thought about just being a good helper? I got two, two ladies that's not here tonight. They had a situation in their family. The dad, the grandpa's in the hospital. But uh, Brian's two daughters. My mind just went blank. But Brother Brian... Edmerson's uh, two daughters. They came up to me one night. I preached a sermon in this church, and I said, "Find something to do in the church. Get with your pastor and ask him, is there anything I can do?" 
And I had two little girls come up to me after church and guess that those are the only two out of 120 on that Sunday that I preached that Sunday, that Sunday sermon. Two little girls come up to me and says, Brother Hunt, give me a job in the church. Give me something to do. They wanted something to do. And they're what, 10 and 12 or something like that? Just, just, just young girls. They wanted something to do in the house of God. And guess what? The one of them, and guess what job hers is? And she's not here tonight. She's probably watching. Brother Brian, I love your family. Probably watching. But you know what her job is? One of her jobs is this. I won't tell you which one it is because it's their business. But one of their jobs is to do this. Do nothing but pick up snotty nose rags on the pew after you leave. The one you wiped your nose in and just laid down in the pew, you know, the one that you, I'm just going to let there, somebody clean it up. This young girl, she does it every Sunday. She'll run around grabbing them and she'll pick them up, throw them in the way. And so her sister was kind of jealous, so she come to me the next Sunday. She says, you got to give me something too. And I said, wow. I said, let me think about it. I already gave her the snotty nose. I'll let you have, I, I'll let you give you something next week. So I told her, I said, anytime you see the women's bathroom need toilet paper, just go stick some toilet paper in their bathroom. Little stuff like that. Finding your purpose. Let me ask you tonight, what do you really feel is your purpose in the kingdom of God? Is it to build up the kingdom or is it to build you up? If we're not careful, we want to build ourselves up. But guess what? It's not about Brother Hunt tonight. I'm the pastor here, but it's not about me. It's not about what I can do. It's not about how, how loud I can preach or how long I can preach or, or can I find a sermon that's, and I'm gonna be honest with you, some people like the preachers that go deep in the word of God. To me, what good would it be if I go and dig out something you don't even have any idea what I'm talking about? I wanna, I wanna get where we're living tonight, but I'm gonna tell you, you'll, you'll, never, you'll never be a tree in the current form that we're in tonight. This is an apple tree that they're about to plant tonight. They're, they're trying to find a, plant, a place to plant it. Guess what? That, that tree there is gonna grow up and do something in its life. It's gonna, it's gonna produce things because they put the right fertilizer. They put the right things. But what if, what if the plant, the good part of the apple tonight, what if that's all we use? What if the peeling, that's all that we use? Would we get anywhere? Church, I'm telling you, you won't get anywhere just looking good. You won't. And hey, I agree with the holiness from the head to the toe and I'm not a changing. I believe it's the way it ought to be. If you don't believe it, just, just don't believe the word of God. I've got scripture to back what I say. And I'm not gonna preach what I don't uh, see in the word of God. There's things that we got a little iffy on, but I'm gonna tell the church tonight, if, if um, our future is our seed tonight, what we plant tonight is our future. I, I wrote it in on a piece of paper in my office tonight. I wish I'd brought it in here, but let's see if I remember how I wrote it. When God spoke it to me, I said, that's, that's beautiful right there because a lot of times people don't understand. We're building, a lot of times we're, we're building now for ourselves. But I'm, I told somebody just this week, I says, we're not building a church of 500 for us. We got room for us. We already got a seat. Come on, but we're building a, a, the, a church of 500 for the 400 that are coming. Anybody with me? But how am I gonna do it, Brother Art? I'm gonna plant a seed tonight and I'm gonna nurse my, my tree. I'm gonna nurse my plant. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back on next Sunday and guess what? I'm not gonna just plant it over here in the sun and don't worry about it, but I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna water it. So preachers, you can't be a preacher if you don't water your, your sermons. How do you water your sermons? You read the Bible. I like what one man told me. Uh, uh, he told me this just not too long ago. He said, anybody can get a sermon if they just read their Bible. Because the Bible is what? Full of sermons. But guess what? When I preach that sermon, I need somebody to pour some water on it. I need somebody to get out there and say, hey, you ain't gonna believe what Brother Hunt preached this past Wednesday. He preached on, hey, let's find our purpose. What is my purpose? Is my purpose to be a great song leader or a great preacher or a great Sunday school teacher? You know what? A lot of times we just need to stop and realize our, our purpose might just be a children's church worker. Well, no, not, no, not me. You know, I, 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 I had a video. I wish I had thought about it. I would have played it tonight. It was a comedians that, that done a video in, at Brother Beckton's church where we're going this Friday, matter of fact. And uh, they did a little comedian thing through the church. And this man says, Pastor, we're going to leave the church if we don't get something we want to do. You know, we, we really, we feel like God's gonna use our ministry. I'm, we're somebody special. And they was really 
into putting it out there. It was a comedian. I've got it somewhere in my, maybe in my office. But he said, we're leaving. And of course, there are this funny looking people. And he took them around the whole church. He took them to the cry room. Well, we don't really feel like it's our calling. Took them around to the uh, Spanish work. Oh, we don't speak Spanish. Took them around to, and took them to every class that there is and everything. And then he said, well, all we got left is the sanctuary. And they came through the back door and, and, and the wife says, Who, whose chair is that? And he went right over to the preacher's chair. And they said, well, whose chair is this right here? And he said, well, that's the choir. He said, well, can we sit here? This is where we like to be. Now, I know that sounds kind of, y'all think, what are you trying to say, brother? I'm trying to tell you is it's not all that's happening up here is what we have to be. This might be the peeling and it might be the good part of the apple, but I'm gonna tell you, for this church to go somewhere, we need some more Sunday school teachers. Come on, we need some more, somebody to find their passion on what really stirs their life up. We need somebody to step out and say, you know what? If I'm not preaching there, then I shouldn't do anything else. Uh, no, that's not what we ought to say, but we ought to say, guess what? Yeah, Brother Hunt, I don't have to be there. Put me in a Sunday school class somewhere. Put, put me at the nursing home preaching. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. We got one that said, yeah, who was that? I want to see you at nursing home next time. Because you know what, that, that is a purpose. What is my purpose in life? My purpose is to do something for God. Hey, I gotta get to the core of what I really am supposed to be doing. I may not be nothing but a toilet cleaner, but I'm gonna do it good if that's what God's got me doing. Uh, yeah. I wonder how many preachers we would have today if, if they'd done it like our old time preachers did. They'd come up and say, uh, Pastor, I feel led to call to preach. He said, come on, I'm gonna show you where you start at. And he took him into the cleaning closet and gave him the brush to the toilet and says, that's where you start your ministry at. There's preachers that do that, that has done that. I don't know if they still do it, but has done it. I wonder how many people will feel the call to preach. Guess what? That is part of preaching. That's part of preaching, just being a servant of doing what I'm supposed to do. But the thing is, where is my purpose at? What am I good at? Am I, am I willing to step forward past my, my tiredness? Because when you get your, pers your, your uh, purpose, when that passion kicks in, guess what? The passion kicks in beyond how tired you are. I'm just going to be honest with you. Now, I've seen people, and I'm going to hurry tonight, but I've seen people t literally, literally be just dead to the world. I mean, couldn't move at all. Just like in church, just be like this. But then all of a sudden, the preacher or somebody says something that they really like. Woo, yeah, now you're preaching. You know why? Because they hit a, a passion hit them. Whatever that was, that one passion just come alive in them. And that's the way it is. But tonight, church, we got to find our passion tonight. We got to see where it's at. What, what really moves me? Does it do me good to see those kids getting the Holy Ghost over here in the children's church having a great time? Does it do me good to know that, that my kids are being fed the word of God? What moves me? I believe sometimes we have to peel past the way we act, act to see who we are. Sometimes you have to peel past it to find out really what's in there. And I think we need to do that, my friend, because we can't afford to throw away any more seeds tonight. We threw away seeds. There's been some good people that's come through this church that have left. I wish we had everybody that's ever left our church come back and just come in here and love each other and worship God. You don't know. I believe tonight we would probably have three, 400 souls at least. But they have left because they chose not to get down to the core and find out who they really are. Too many times, if we don't find out who we really are, this, this outside's only gonna last very, uh, very long. Matter of fact, we got two apples that's sitting at home right now. I don't know why my wife hadn't thrown them in the garbage. They're just sitting up there uh, rotting in a way, you know, in your little bar like they do and on your little fruit basket. But, but the thing is, this only lasts a while, but when we get down to the core, we gotta put that, that seed in the ground because... It's our passion to plant these seeds. We ought to have a passion to plant what we are. Let me ask you a question tonight. Those that maybe, let's say if you're 60 and above, let me ask you a question. What your passion is tonight, do you think anybody, have you got anybody in mind that you're gonna leave that passion to that you hope that they come up with that same passion you got? Have you thought about planting a seed or are you still working on that apple, on the good part of it, on that peeling part of it? Or have you really got down to the seed and went on and planted? I think if we get about 60 years old, we already ought to have a seed plant somewhere to come in our place. Let me tell you why I say that because I know pastors today that are 70 plus years old that are still having a pastor because they never planted a seed. 
They're still having, they, they barely can get to church on time because of their sicknesses and things that's going on. They just barely make it to the platform and the church runs about 20 or 30 people because they don't have any enthusiasm to move. Church, I'm telling you what I'm doing tonight. I've been doing for two or three years here lately. I'm planting seed to see who's gonna take my place. Why are you doing that, Brother Hunt? Because I'm 43 years old and I'm not gonna be here preaching to you at 80 years old. I'm sorry, but I think a man that's got enough energy, that's got enough enthusiasm, I mean, uh, come on, I, want, I, I think a pastor ought to have enough energy when he gets off the pulpit to walk back to that back door and shake hands with everybody, have a good night, see you later. If you don't have enough energy to do that, then you probably need to be looking for another pastor. Well, y'all show quiet tonight. I'm preaching about me tonight. Why? Because I feel God's got a, a, a time. But if I plant a seed tonight to show some people, this is the way a pastor should do. This is the way a pastor ought to be. I shouldn't sit in my office until it's time for me to preach and run up here with my head up and say, look at me. I got, look what I'm doing. I'm making six figures. I've got all this figured out. And I'm not, by the way. If you want to know, I tell you after church what I make. I have no problem telling you that. But the thing is, this is, is this. I got to plant a seed tonight because there's going to be a tree coming along going to be an apple tree and somebody's got to stand in this pulpit and I want them to preach what I preach. I don't want them doing like our, our local churches are doing nowadays and start preaching anything that just make a crowd, draw, draw a crowd. I know people are doing that. People are leaving UPC because they don't believe in holiness anymore. They don't believe you have to do that stuff anymore. But listen to me, the seed that I'm planting is not going to be a mixed up tree. It's going to be a pure apple tree. It's not going to be any two or three different kinds of trees. It's going to be pure tree. So what are we, what, what, what motivates us? I'm, I'm gonna get ready to close, but what motivates us tonight? When you come to church here, what motivates you? What's your passion? You know what I want us to do? I want you guys to come to me some private time and just say, Brother Hunt, this is really what I would like to see do in the church. This is what I really would like to do. Because when you tell me that now, that means you're making a commitment to me and I'm fixing, I'm fixing to hold your feet to the, to the iron and we're gonna see it done in Jesus' name. But if you get the passion, guess what's gonna happen? If you get, get that motivation going, guess what's gonna happen? There's gonna be other trees, if you put that last slide up, brother, brother Child, there's gonna be other trees that's gonna stop popping up, like this apple tree right here that he's fixing to show you in just a second. It's at the, on the bottom of that screen, there it should be. There it is. If you plant seeds, that's what's gonna happen. Now, would you wanna stay the baby tree or would you wanna see apple trees like this just fall over the place? Wouldn't it be good to can some apples for a little while? Wouldn't it be good to have a great apple tree? Well, let me tell you, not only, is, not only if I plant this seed, am I gonna get to enjoy an apple or two probably by the end of my life, uh, but my grandbabies are gonna enjoy these apple trees. But if they come in and my grandbabies come in and they don't go to the core and they don't plant a seed as well, guess what? Their grandbabies are gonna be a mess. And before it's over, there's not gonna be anything as seeds anymore. Just, just eat the peeling and eat the apple, throw the rest away. But I come today to tell the church, we gotta find who we are, what our purpose is, what God has got me made for. Come on, now, Sister Tasha might be a better singer than I am. So if she is, guess what I need to do? I, say, I need to say, you go sing, and I'm just gonna keep preaching. Because she ain't gonna get my preaching time, praise God. But sometimes, that's where we are. We gotta find out our purpose. You know what? I, I'm, I'm holding the iron down, I'm holding the fort down, but when I get about 65 years old and, and whoever the young man is that comes up in my footsteps, whoever the Elisha is, uh, I wanna be able to lay my mantle on him and I wanna be able to say, preach the truth and sell it not. Don't hold back. Uh, come on, we need somebody to take a pulpit today that still preaches the truth. That's planting the truth seed. We need some people to come in. But what is our purpose? Our purpose is to plant seeds. Church, I'm telling you, too often, and I've, I've told some of my elders that's in my life, I've told them, I says, you guys are not planting seeds. You're enjoying the outside of the apple and you're enjoying the apple and you're eating good fruit. But what, I was gonna tell you what I, it just come to me again, I guess I better say it. What, what, uh, what are you doing for the church now? Ask yourself, what am I doing for church now? All right, let me ask you this. What are you gonna do for the church when you die? You thought about it lately? Well, I don't guess it really matters after I die. Yes, it does. Because you're leaving back, back some precious souls that you love that's gonna need a church, that's gonna need an apple, that's gonna need to go back to, the, back to the apple farm. They're gonna have to go back and look at it again. So when we die, it does. What do we do when we die? We gotta leave something behind so our kids can enjoy what we enjoyed. 
We can't, guess what? We, I told you a while ago, if our kids today, if they got to the point that they had to, to survive, they probably would die. They'd probably be homeless today if they had to survive out of gardens and, and things like that. I, it, and I have a hard time. I told you I couldn't plant a garden, but I, I, would, I know what it takes to do it. But to, what I'm saying today is this, is we gotta learn to leave something behind. What are we leaving? How about some seeds of, of how to pay tithes? How about some seeds of, of how to be faithful to the house of God? I'm gonna tell you, as pastor for, I was a youth pastor for 10 years and I've been here for 13 years, so for 23 years in pastoral leadership, I, I've saw this a lot. I've saw a lot of parents let kids, or the parents started missing church here and there and come when they want to come and didn't see a lot of them. And eventually, guess what? The kids followed that pattern. The kids begin to miss here, miss there. Before you know it, then their kids didn't care about church at all. And I've seen it over generations. I'm here to tell you, what are you leaving for your kids to see tonight? What kind of seed are you planting back for your kids? But I'm, I'm gonna tell you, until we find our core, we'll never have a future. Until we find the core of who we really are, we'll never have a future. Your kids will never have a future. Guess what? Your kids, believe it or not, our kids, my kids, they see everything that we do. Church, our future is not, not our appealing. It's, our appealing is our suits and our ties and a nice looking church. Uh, that's all appealing stuff. You know, the, these, these pianos and things, that's just a, the fruit of the apple. But this, this is not the future of the church. This stuff is not the future. As a matter of fact, this stuff one day is going to be gone. It'll probably be a different pulpit standing in front of you. It'll probably be different music instruments standing. Matter of fact, I want to ask you a question. Somebody uh, shared this with me the other day. I says, and, and I, I love when, he, when they told me this. I says, think about it. Ten years from now, all this stuff's not even going to matter. Y'all believe that? Ten years from now, these chairs are going to be gone. New chairs, new guitar players, probably new piano, new piano player, new drum player. Everything's going to be different. But what is going to matter is this is what seed I plant tonight on, on August the 19th, 2015. If I plant a seed that somebody's gonna be able to enjoy the, the blessings off of it, and I hope it's my grandkids, can I hear amen? amen. Hope it's your grandkids, I hope it's your, your child, your children, because if what we plant now is gonna determine what our kids are gonna get in the, in the future. And I don't know about you, I, I gotta find my purpose today. It's not even in, in your fruit, it's not, but it's in your core. You can't transfer from the peeling. You can't transfer or transform from the, from the uh, fruit of the apple. You can't change. Let, let me just say this tonight, okay? Because I think everybody needs to hear this. You cannot change what you are or, or, uh, or not are you unconcerned about. You can't change anything that you're not concerned about. Matter of fact, have you ever, have you ever noticed a messy person's house? You know why it's messy? Because they don't care. Not concerned about it. If I was concerned about it, because you know what? When you're concerned about it, you know what happens? You change it. If you're concerned about situations, you go in and you, no matter if you've got to stay up at three o'clock in the morning, and I'm, I use my wife's example all the time, but she's that way. Something gets on her mind at three o'clock in the morning, she wakes up and she's gone. She's doing it because she says, if it's got to be changed, let's change it. Let's don't wait around. Why? Because she gets concerned about it. And I want to let you know tonight this. If you're concerned about it, guess what? God's concerned about it. And that's the way it works. But you're at your best when you're at your core. Lots of times people, uh, people can see, um, see the peeling and they can see, like I said, they can see everything that's happening here, but they don't see the core. And I, I believe lots of people tonight, you'll find, you'll find yourself back at the core where you really need to be at. Where did it all start at? When God spoke to me back in the day, what, what did he really tell me to do? I think it's time to go back to the core of what God has us to do in this place. But I, I, come on, we, we gotta transform. And when we transform, we transform and we renew again and we renew again. It takes an everyday thing to renew my mind, God, because as I told you, our mind is in the dumps every day. I mean, I think you, sometimes you can go to doctor's offices, sitting there in the doctor's office, they got some kind of music playing. It, it's wherever you go, the music is just destroying our minds and it's getting us back. But if we can go back and clear our mind, renew the right mind in us, I believe tonight that we can have some things created in our lives. Who's ready to try to find your purpose tonight? What is my purpose? You know, uh, Sister Betty, your purpose might just be having pretty plants all over the church. Whatever the purpose is, you know, it might just be, uh, hey, I just want to make sure there's no trash on the, on the lawn. I want to make sure that you know, those kind of things, it's got to find a purpose. It's like I tell you not too long ago, uh, uh, a lady in the church told the pastor, said, Pastor, I don't want you to never worry about the plants on the front porch anymore. She said, that's my job. 
And she did. She brought new fresh plants every Sunday and put them on that porch. That was her passion. That's what she loved to do. Why? Because she knew everybody that walks up to the door is going to say, my, them are pretty plants. And it was her passion. She had it in her hand. Church, I'm here to tell you, God created everything with a seed inside of it. He did. Watch this, Genesis 1 and 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding the seed, the fruit a tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is itself upon the earth and it shall and it will it was so but we we have we have we have uh, to find the seed that's in there the the plant that's in us the, that's deep in us we got to find it and we find that seed as i said a moment ago we've got to plant it come on we got we can't just throw it in the trash can and say you know what i don't need this this is I mean, i'm not going to eat it this ain't doing me any good a lot of times we're that way well it don't do me any good if i'm sitting out here in a pew and just looking yes you do have something to do you may not be preaching tonight but you should be you should have a gallon of water right now ready to pour on what i'm preaching tonight you got something to do. You may not be preaching. You may not be singing tonight, Sister Usher, but don't get your feelings hurt. Your day's coming. But right now, I want you to water what I'm putting out. What we got to learn to do, Sister Turner, is we got to water everything that steps behind that platform. You and I, you and I are the only ones that's going to make this church grow by watering it because God's going to give the increase. But if we water it, God's going to increase it. But if we don't water it, God's not going to increase it. How are we going to water it? How are we going to water it is this, is we're going to back everything that's up on that platform. Well, I got pretty stern Sunday night, so just let me say it this way again. If you got your, your specific singers and preachers and you're not going to back nobody else, then let me tell you, you're absolutely wrong. Oh, boy, that didn't go over too good. But you are, because it's not about uh, his style of preaching that I don't like. It's not about his style of singing that I don't like. Well, he ain't as good as so-and-so. We ought to let so-and-so preach or so-and-so sing or so-and-so do this. No, the thing is, it's, it's all about him, I thought, right? It's not all about Brother Hunt and how, how good looking I am and how pretty I sing and how good I can do this or how good I can do that. It's nothing about me. Matter of fact, I'm the least of all tonight. But the matter that it does matter about is this one right here. If the church ever forgets that's what it's about, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. It's not about, it's not about me tonight, church. Listen, don't, don't ever think it's about me. And guess what? It's not about you either. It's not about you, but it's about him. I done told you we're not building a church of 500 for you and me. We're not. We're building it for the other 400 that's coming with us. Anybody ready to do it with me? If you'll come, Sister Holly, to the piano, please. Finding our purpose. What is our purpose? Our purpose is to produce more. That's our purpose. Whatever, however we got to do it, it's our purpose is to produce more. Let me ask you this. If we find a core we are, and you find out you got to go plant, are you okay having, would it be okay to have about 50 more, 50 more Tasha's floating around here? Would it be okay to have 50 more Maxwells and Matthews and Pattons? Would it be okay to have 50 more? Would you be okay to have 50 Terriers like you? You know, we, we have to pray a lot, but we, we can, we need, no, just kidding. But, but yeah, if you had 50 more Terriers, you have to, most hunts, you have to pray more for sure. But what I'm saying tonight is this, is when we plant it, let's let it know that it's going to be what we are. Whatever we plant is going to come up just exactly what we are. If you're one of the top tithe payers and you plant something, it's going to grow that way. If you, uh, if you are a thief and you don't pay your tithes, you plant, it'll grow that way. Come on. Whatever you plant is going to come up. I didn't do much garden, Brother Haley, as I said, but I do know this. If I plant a pea, I don't get corn. If I plant a tomato, I don't get squash. If I plant a tomato, I get a tomato. And tonight, I'm going to ask us, what are you planting? What are you putting in the garden? What are you planting tonight? Are you taking care of it? Are you going back and watering it? I think one of our biggest problems, especially uh, my, my wife and I, problem is this, is and I put me on that top list too, because she always wants to garden when it's 72 and 75 degrees. She loves to work in the garden. And she's got me out there digging all these holes. I dig the holes for her. She said, I'm going to take care of it. You just get it planted, and I'm going to take care of it. Don't you worry about it. I'm gonna, I said, okay, okay. 72 and 75 degrees she makes it pretty there's no grass growing she keeps all the grass out everything's looking good but when it gets about to 100 degrees 
We don't even open the mini blinds to look out there and see how it's doing. Grass takes over and everything gets over. You know why? Because it was too hot to go. It wouldn't. Guess what? It's going to get a hot in this journey that we're in. It's going to have bad days. Matter of fact, there's going to be some days that you really, really, really rather just stay home and rest. But I'm telling you, the best rest you can have is coming to God's house. Even when you're tired, Sister Usher, right? She'll amen this because she does it a lot. She'll call me, Brother Hunt, I just don't know if I can make it. Then she gets here and she just got a smile on her face because she knows where her joy is. She knows how she can get it. What I'm telling the church tonight is we need to find our purpose. Our purpose is not in the peeling. It's not in the spotlight. Has anybody noticed how many new lights are in this church in the last month? Y'all didn't know. Y'all didn't know. I, put, I changed out every light in this church in the last month. All this is LED lighting. Y'all didn't even notice. That hurt my feelings. Don't feel bad. Nobody, my wife hadn't even noticed it yet. It's been a month. But what I'm saying tonight is what is my purpose? I want y'all to think about it. We're going to have an altar call in a minute. But right tonight, you may not be able to find it tonight. You may not realize what, what it really... You know, I have been kind of... Uh, doing this to keep things going for a while I have been out taking care of this making sure it it works but is it really my purpose is it really what God's got me to do you know I was doing this but really it's not it's not really what I feel it's, it is other words let me tell you this if you drag to it and you're dragging like this and you know, here I am again it's probably not your it's probably not your purpose if you ever you ever complain about coming to music practice early it's probably not your purpose if you ever complain about Brother Hunt having prayer 30 minutes early before church is probably not your purpose and you don't have a passion for prayer. But because think about this, y'all, y'all get with me for a minute. Now I'm gonna tell you on my side of the story. If uh let's use Christina tonight, my, my daughter-in-law, if she's gonna have a baby, and it's three o'clock in the morning. Do y'all think I'm gonna roll over and just let me know how it goes? I see you next couple of days. No, and you wouldn't either. None of us would. Why? Because you have a passion to see new life and a baby come into this world. And you run down to that hospital or, and you see these babies coming into life. And no, none of them is pregnant. So I'll let y'all know that. So you can go ask her. But, but I'm just giving you an example tonight. Whatever moves you and motivates you ought to be your passion. And what we got to do is we got to put it to work for God's kingdom. This is how we're gonna. This is how we're gonna double. Like I said last Sunday, this is how we're gonna double between now and July. Is get our motivation going. Find our purpose. Because I'm going to tell you, if you're in something that's not your purpose or your passion, you can mess it up. You can make it fall. You can make it, make it fall backwards. But how many wants to move the kingdom forward, not backwards? I want to go forward with God's kingdom tonight. What, what, what is purposes in life? I believe sometimes you can just have some good wisdom. You can have, like I said, encouragement, spirit to people. You know, I... A lot of times, and I want to say this because we got about 11 preachers here, but a lot of times people feel the call to preach, but they don't have a passion to preach. A lot of times the call might be, it might be being a youth leader, but not a preacher. It might be, it might be being over the outreach, but not a preacher. It could be as simple as just, just helping around the church, making sure things are in order, but not a preacher. You know what I'm saying? It could be. The thing I'm trying to tell you tonight is find out who you are. What has God got me Chuck, you're not here by accident, my friend. God's got something for Chuck to do. Tasha, the devil don't want you here. But see, you're going to make a liar out of him because you, God's got something for you to do. And it could go on and on. Brother Terry came from a Baptist faith and loved God, but he didn't know the depth of it, what, we, what he knows now. But he came in and he didn't quit on the pew. He didn't just stop. He kept digging until he found his purpose of what God's got him to do. He probably, he, probably, he probably could preach tonight if I asked Brother Terry to come up here and, hey, I want you to finish this sermon. He could do it. But he knows that ain't, his, that ain't his motivation to preach yet. He ain't never told me about it. But what I'm saying is it might be done. But what is our passion tonight? Your passion won't let you down. Remember that. Your passion won't, won't steer you wrong. Come on. The, your, your flesh will because guess what? It's not saved. It's going gonna, it's gonna to lead you and make you think things that's not true. But if you get your passion stirred up, you get something motivated. Come on, we need we need 50 in the, in the senior choir. We need 50 more in the, in the regular choir. We need it. But hey, if you can't sing, it might not be a good place to be. 
Come on, if you can't sing, it may be the best thing to find somebody that's got that passion. But you know what your passion could be? Is, hey, Sister Holly, I found these three songs I really love. Would you work on them? I really feel like they're going to be great. Hey, I, I, I can't sing it, but you sound so good. You do good, John. You do good, Sister Turner. You do good, but hey, I can't do it. But I love to hear some good singing. How about y'all? But where has God got my, me at tonight? What is your job for the church? Your job might just be to make sure I'm doing okay. I can take it. I can take it. Praise God. Call me to the office. Call me to the carpet. Put me where I need to be because I want to know I'm right, church. I want to know that I'm right. I don't want to be thinking I'm right. I want to think I'm in the right place. I'm, I'm sure it's where God's got me. I want to know it's where God's got me. I want to know that my passion is right, my, 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 my burden and, my, and what I'm doing for God. My purpose today is where God's got me. Well, how about it? Are you ready to move forward tonight again? If you are, would you stand with me tonight? We're going to go home. But tonight, I want you to come to this altar. If you want to kneel, stand. But I want you to say, God, just show me what I'm really supposed to do. Am I supposed to preach? I want to preach. If I'm supposed to sing, I want to sing. If I'm just supposed to water, I want to be the water boy. It doesn't matter to me, whatever it is. I just want to be a part of kingdom's God, of the kingdom of God. Or if it's a doorkeeper, it doesn't matter to me. Just give me something to do. Maybe I can help Brother Terry. Maybe I can help a Sunday school teacher. Maybe I, maybe I can just go help Sister Hunt rout the kids, kids. Whatever it may be, just give me something, God. Show me my purpose. Show me what I'm supposed to do. All I want you to do, God, is use me, not refuse me. I just want to be used for your kingdom. God, touch my heart. Go ahead, church. Ask him tonight. What is my true purpose for the kingdom of God? Remember, there's not nobody here that God doesn't have something for you to do today. God bless you.